were talking about this a couple weeks ago when the word that we were going to be losing some of our state parks. Yeah. I know, I know, you know, this is like a moot point because they've changed it now and said they've they scrapped the plans. Yeah. But they were trying to basically launch uh, a bunch of like golf courses, pickleball courts, uh, 350 room hotels at nine state parks, including two in the Tampa Bay area. This was like, you know, a serious plan. Yeah. And the person who I guess is responsible for us finding out about that is James Gaddis. And James Gaddis has uh, been fired Ooh. from his job. He's a, a whistleblower. And he basically said uh, to the Tampa Bay Times that he returned home on Saturday afternoon where he found a dismissal letter <laughs> waiting on his townhome doorstep. The former two-year Florida Department of Environmental Protection employee told the Tampa Bay Times that he was the one who leaked the information about the state's plans mm -hmm. to build all of this nice, fun stuff in the parks. Like, I mean, Florida Lodging. without the parks, that seems kind of mean, uh, but it's profitable. Yeah. So that's what they were planning on doing. Uh, now, uh, according to this report, the agency appears to be firing him According to a copy of the letter, which he shared uh, with the reporter, it says that he uh, was hired by the agency as a, a cartograph, a cart cartographer, Ooh, uh, said his actions weren't political and that he uh, that they were two main reasons that he chose to speak out. He it was a rush to secrecy and uh, he was by, they were behind the park plans and he wanted it to get out there, there. And so they fired him because he shared state information. Yeah. What did you expect, though? You can't give it away any information that isn't public knowledge. Yeah, and but whistleblo whistleblowers job. do that not because they want to keep their job, but because they feel like it was a greater good. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's up to the community to get this dude a job. No, I'm actually glad he did because think about what would have happened if he didn't say anything. They probably would have got this deal done without anybody even talking. No, there's no probably. There's no probably. They, I mean, they would have rolled it through. I mean, had it not gotten, had it gotten steam and, and him not, uh, you know, I mean, whistleblowers are very important in that realm is that they bring some attention to it before people are ready for you to know. Yes. You know, it, so well, so somebody got to hire this dude. It was, uh, I think it was supposed to be like some sort of a proposal that they were slowly putting together. It wasn't, they didn't narrow down everything that they wanted in the plan. And then before they actually put it together, that's when he leaked the information. He basically told, and I don't mind. Mm -hmm. Ooh, who is that? That's Tori. He shut it down. That's Tori Spelling. Oh, yeah. my God. I thought that was something. <laughs> That's Tori Spelling. Yeah, Tori Spelling. That's Dancing with the Stars, people. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's had a lot Is of work. Is that work? Then. Yeah. That's Is that why work. she looks like that? A lot of work. Okay. Yeah, um, a ton of it. Wow. Uh, so, uh, and there's another story uh, here. Both of these are on my sheet this morning. Uh, the Tampa City Council is considering a proposal to limit liquor permits in specific areas in the Bay Area. Oh, interesting. These are including Seminole Heights. Oh. Soho. Oh. Tampa Heights. What? Council member Bill Carlson introduced this measure following a fatal incident that happened in May on South Howard Avenue where the, where the shooting happened. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the proposal aims to manage bar and restaurant density near residential neighborhoods. Yes. And gauge local opinions on high concentration of liquor licenses. Oh, no, nah, dude. I don't like this. You're going to kill South Howard. Right you are going to kill South You're Howard. Do a but lot of but it. the thing is, I, all people are talking about is the fact that what is, what's Tampa known for? Like, I, I always refer to when Queen Latifah came here for the Super Bowl. And every time I've seen her afterwards, she's like, that wide boy city. Y'all got a French quarter. Yeah. That thing is like New Orleans. Mm -hmm. She is, like, raving about She's She's been probably the biggest, most staunch, like, reviewer of the Bay Area since that Super Bowl that she came to. Yeah. And that identity is something that the new controllers of Tampa don't want. Hmm. They don't want to be the party spot. They don't want to be the, you know, strewn up and down the street with clubs and stuff like that. I don't that. think you're going to be able to fix this because, um, I mean, everywhere you go in Tampa, there's no city planning whatsoever Ooh. when it happened. I mean, when I moved here from Jacksonville, Jacksonville is all plotted, planned out. You can only have strip clubs in a certain small area. Um, so trying to reverse everything now, the city is is already built up way too much. You can, I mean, you're just going to eliminate so many businesses and everything. I don't think you can But these that. are the party spots. They're, 
but, but, but I, Tampa has had a part. Tampa's a parade city. Yes. Gasparilla, guava weed, yeah. all that. We're because that city. stems from the party basis of Tampa. These sure. changes now are trying to make it New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. That's trying not to gonna, make, trying to make it built up and profitable and with no... Because you realize, like, clubs are now at a minimum. Mm-hmm. Lounges are now at a minimum. Yep. Like, you got new ones that are opening up that are, like, you know, very small and not, not able to handle a lot of folks. And now that, that, that the hood is starting to go out there and act crazy, and I mean, like, the young aggressive whether it's gang whether it's just thugging Wild. whatever it is but yeah. that kind of mentality is coming into these spots which is close to the residential neighborhoods mm-hmm. they just like all right we'll just scrap the liquor spots well it's changing. no more parties there's more people moving here i mean you've seen the street takeovers that have been happening Dude, recently that's, a, as that's well. a part of the whole lure of tampa though a lot of people are coming here because of how fun it is and how like free we are with, yeah, but I live know, with the party <laughs> so i'm raising a family here you know what I'm saying? i don't want somebody so you don't want no more to the, i mean because i'm just saying like we we, it's a balance we got a balance i don't think you're gonna be able to shut down businesses that's gonna be a bad look i mean i understand uh trying to regulate certain things in the future but how are you gonna just destroy ebor or seminal heights and take away restaurants you're taking away jobs and people need all that stuff especially nowadays there are a lot of uh business developers who are trying to buy out club spaces Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i i know one club owner specifically who's turned down a lot of money Mm -hmm for his building that he actually owns and because they have an agenda for Ebor and they want all of those spots moved away and now they can put yeah. those multi-purpose kind of oh. mid midtown kind of looking places that have like commerce and they have also residential mm-hmm. and that's the big look to have like stuff that's that's functionable on both sides yeah because and he's he's like I refuse to sell like I, he's like, I'm not a, I don't think you can hit the price point that I have. Cause I own it and yeah. B I don't want to get rid of it because this, this is our business. Right. This is what we do and kind of his family's legacy. Dude. But what if you, t- if you take all those businesses out of Ebor city, I'm just going to go with Ebor. But like, what is Ebor after that? Do people still go to Ebor after that? Ebor if you take still out- will be Ebor by name. It still will have the legacy of being, you know, Cigar Central for the Bay Area. The and they'll have a lot of, uh, you know, kind of like um, history and legacy there. They'll, they'll do, a, you know, a lot of stuff to refer to what Ebor was. Mm. But what Ebor is to us who've you know i've lived here 25 years it's always been the party spot yeah. kind of like latifa talks about it like it's a french quarter when it's, i moved exactly. here that's where everybody told me to go start yeah. party. right that's yeah. but now they are like yo like they want coffee shops and they want things to get a little bit more a little nicer nicer yeah, yeah. They don't I don't want people out there throwing up on the road. Because how many times have you seen somebody throwing up on the side of Seventh well, Avenue? I also think oh, a bunch of times. Uh, right. Every they weekend, don't, they don't want that anymore. <laughs> I'm there they, every weekend. They yes. don't want. They don't. They don't want that anymore. I get them trying to clean everything up, but I feel like that's the, a part of the attraction of Tampa. Like you, if you take that stuff out, I feel like you take out a heart of Tampa. It's a part of the attraction. It doesn't have to be. It's it's sad that it's synonymous with like strip clubs or it's you know Ebor mm. and and crime sometimes but it just more people are moving here it's hard to control the situation that's going on right now this says a law uh, out of the 727 would only change and affect new licenses but that 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 puts a cap on what we have that right. means that there'll be no growth cuz look at how many are dissipating now we yeah. have bars that are shutting down yes and the liquor licenses that belong to those places if they transfer that's great if they don't and somebody moves in with a new building they're not if they limit those licenses that means they limit the upside of what we have i loved it when we had fat tuesdays platforms so so and so so and so like up and down the block so you had options and noises from all these different places that made it dope. It was fun, yeah. yeah. You know, like I, I just, I mean, I think that that's something that that everybody could benefit from. But the business owners and the people who are out there who move in the city, money are like, nah, we want, we want, we want a little. Well, better. they want it safer. I mean, it, you have to, sh- you know, go to different options to see if you can make it healthier in an instance or in a way. Um, I like what you said, um, Orlando, about whistleblowers and how important they are essentially for us finding out information. Ben said uh, Meredith with Britain Plaza. She was a whistleblower about that. You're welcome. Okay. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, you was a snitch. <laughs> that was different. That yeah. was I love how they blower. always try and give you a little bit of pat on your back. Blower. You didn't whistle blow. You basically tried to tell hey. before the team. You tried to tell oh. the team before. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. You got yeah. kicked that's out of the mommy group. Yeah, that's not a, that's that's what, not a whistle blow. That's what happened with the dude. At, that wasn't a, official yet. They didn't even have a, a whole plan you know, together. If, if you think about it, she got. So you, you blew the whistle to get them to not build it? No, about people knowing what was going to happen. Hey. You just wanted to be the scoop reporter. That's not a whistleblower. I mean, I That's a scoop reporter. If you think about it, the same way the dude got fired because he gave up the information, you got kicked she out. She got of the kicked mommy out of the mommy group I because did. she yeah. gave up information. Hold so. it down. You thugging. <laughs> you said you uh, it says, sounds like to me they're trying to restore Ebor to what it once was, being born and raised here. It was not like this when I was a child. I remember in the early 70s going with my parents for lunch and shopping in Ebor. I have never been shopping in Ebor. No offense. If I go to Ebor, it's for like a show, for food, and then like to get drunk. But look at look at that, because we always, you know, go to the loud, you know, the, the loud responses of, oh, we need to party. But these are folks that are, this represents... You know, people who are like, "Hey, man!" Before it was a family setting. It was nice. It was. It was. It was. It was different. Right. That's what they want back. Now it's like a bachelor spot. I'm yeah. curious to think of what like the majority of Tampa wants. I, I feel they like don't want the crime. So because I, figure it out. I come from a place where I work in Ebor, so obviously I'm one of those people that are going to say, "Hey, you know, it's bad for them to restrict alcohol licenses and stuff like that, and trying to take away businesses." But I, I'd be curious to know what everybody in Tampa wants because I feel like that's I mean, but where, that's where voting Tampa. comes in. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's that's where, yeah. you know, people because the people who are in power, whether it's, you know, the city government, whether it's council folks or whatever, they get their power from making sure their constituents are covered. Mm -hmm. So if voters who are out there and who are like, you know, you and all of your people who work at the club then yeah, y'all should be, you know, galvanizing that crowd and Going saying, hey, there. we need to go talk to our local council person and let them know. They do know that y'all want this not to happen. Oh, yeah. Because the thing is, people are talking about new licenses. New licenses means competitive spaces. That means that if Rich loses his job here, then he could go across the street to a spot that's like, hey, we got a new new spot. We got a liquor license. We got some music over here. Come over here and do your little stuff. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, it's that kind of like, limitation that when you stop offering you know liquor licenses and places that can compete mm -hmm. you now not you don't have options uh yeah out of the 813 everything can't be fancy how is new orleans still new orleans after at least half a century stop trying to build family homes in party areas all right have you been to new orleans though I like have. as fun as it is yeah. it smells like pee out there <laughs> like it it, and it smells like throw up and like i get what they're saying with the whole cleanup thing because like you do want to clean up eboard just a little bit but i don't think taking away liquor licenses and businesses is the way to go i don't really. think it's too fancy i mean i think people out here want you know a little bit more uh options but i think that we should have a balance of it i think the fact that all the clubs are dissipating like and, and kind of like falling off by the wayside mm -hmm. and, uh, i mean and like big clubs i mean you know eating shut down i'm like what like that was that they put multi millions in it after that whole debacle happened with the last ownership, yeah. you know. So to see that, it's just it's kind of sad because I've had friends who have come here to visit and they're like, "Dude, Tampa is crazy." I mean, the guys from Omega Sci Fi that came here for the conclave, Huge. they're like, "Yes, we want to have that here again because it was." off the hook mm -hmm. you but know? but going back to what you said like eating and stuff like a place like that i feel like should be residential because right around there it, there's nothing but apartment buildings and stuff like that so well, what about mcdennis mcdennis oh, yeah. is right next to a whole block million though. dollar yeah. houses that's All very those, true i mean that's i mean everything on south howard lit, put it this way when that shooting happened i saw police zooming past my place to get there because uh -huh. i've lived four five blocks away from south howard uh, but but those places in south howard were not there like years and years. like when i first moved to tampa that apartment building was just getting built but what i'm I'm not talking about the apartment building what i'm saying is if you go to mcdenton's and stand right in front of mcdenton's and look over at bar howard mm -hmm. and look down here at the sports spot yeah. and all this other stuff you realize that right behind those places all houses. are all houses mm -hmm. and that's what people those are the people who are like yo we've I lived here for 50 years right and i'm not but but the noise has always been there. 
Yes. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So yes. now you complaining about the noise. It's like the noise. It should be grandfathered in. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Like people who have been there that long. They right. should be able to. To, to be able to do their business. Oh, from there. It, Tampa's Orlando changing. I mean, where we going next? <laughs> Orlando from there. No, no, no. There we go. No, no politics. I'm, I'm good with Madam Mayor. I'm good. I'm good. I just, I just would like to see the the luster of of Tampa remain while we get our growth spurts, while we get you know the 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 additions and all of that stuff and all these overpriced places. Like get get all of that cracking. I like yeah. that. I agree. But I would like to see some some good old stanky leg yeah. hole in the walls too. <laughs> so I can get yeah, so give us some of that too. That's why he some... can't run for mayor. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's exactly. They're yeah, like and Mayor Davis, what would you like? I'd like some stanky leg <laughs> kind of places that you can go in there and get your yang right. That's Fantasy what I would like. Right there. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching the video. For all things wild, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel.